Listen, we all started from the beginning. Even someone like myself used to have terrible movement and shoot circles. But after putting endless hours in perfecting my craft, I finally mastered aim and movement, which is the two key components when it comes to winning gunfights. And that's what today's video is going to be about. It's going to be a guide slash tip to help you guys improve and really teach you everything you need to know. I'm sure the goal is to have you guys shooting like Biffle and have movement like Joe Woe. So strap in, grab some popcorn, get the notepad. Let's get right into it. So we can all agree, hitting your shots and making sure they land on your opponent is extremely important when it comes to winning a gunfight, right? Obviously, we're going to be breaking down a lot of things when it comes to aim, but the first thing we're going to be tackling is your sensitivity slash settings. And this is actually very important, whether you believe it or not. These are my dead zones here. You can put your right stick dead zone a little bit lower to like 0 0.9. You're going to notice a pretty good change when it comes to controlling recoil. But then with these weirdly fast gunfights are going to be a little bit of a struggle. So if you feel like your aim is really that bad, you can lower this to 0.9 and over time, slowly increase it to so you can be better, a little more skillful. For my sense, I got 7.7 seven and I play on 0 0.85. Something I really recommend is usually your ADS sense. You want to have it on a 6. 0 0.85 times 7. I'm pretty sure it's about 5.94 or something like that. Very close to 6 ADS sense. I, I like to say 5.5 .5 to 6 is usually where the, your ADS sense you want to have it. You don't want to have it too slow, but you also don't want to have it too fast. Now, this is a very consistent sense. I usually recommend between 6 to 8. I usually don't want you to go higher than that. If you want to have a really really good aim and making sure you're hitting a lot of your shots usually between five to six ads cents and making sure you're playing six to eight cents so like for example if i go to eight eight and usually i could play on 0 0.75 which is six ads or i can even go down to like 0 0.7 but usually you don't want to go lower than that because now you're going to struggle versus really up close and fast cracked out gameplay and also make sure your aim response curve type is dynamic that's also going to help a little bit with aim assist another thing if you are playing on pc i like scale aim assist with fov disabled i think this this gives you a better aim assist pull which is really nice and it's definitely beneficial now for the people with the very fast sensitivity there's a reason why you want to lower it down and it's for centering and it's just an overall as well to have more consistent shots with your ads and centering and centering is going to be the next thing we're going to be talking about so centering is one of the most important things that makes a good player have really good aim and centering is basically when you're maneuvering around the map you're running around in the center and also centering on and potential opponents or anticipating an enemy being nearby so let's say for example i'm gonna lose something go back up to the center you're constantly centering on areas you're constantly ready for a gunfight and i know it takes a lot of practice but it's gonna be something extremely important you lose something in the ground back to centering you have to be very very on top of this i'm gonna center up i heard him down now i'm gonna center down you're constantly centering on where your opponents might be. Loadout got popped. I'm a center by the loadout. Now, this takes a lot of muscle memory and a lot of practice. But with the practice and with the reps, you can definitely get this down. Another example, I'm going to go up the stairs. I'm going to center back up. You see, I'm not going to run like this. Instead, I'm going to run looking up. And this centering is going to save you time. It's going to sa save you, you know, making adjustments mid fight because you're already going to be aimed at your opponent. You did the hard part. Now all you have to do is aim in and hit the shots, which can be actually somewhat, you know, fairly easy. Because the my the minuscule, the small adjustments are the easy part. But like first, you know, getting landing on your opponent, having the crosshair. You can see the centering. I I turn around, look up, centered, ready. I'm ready. These guys can't catch me really slipping because I am ready for these gunfights. Center in the middle. And I'm constantly centering. This is something the best players in the world do. This is something Biffle does really well. Centered at all times. I'm ready for the fight. Bro is right. And if you're wondering, Apathy, how do I practice this? Well, you can do this in a custom game. You can do this in a bot lobby. You can do this in pubs. And by bots, I mean just playing bots. Um, the main thing is important is you have to be mindful of this while you're playing. You have to be on top of it. It's not going to be normal to you, especially if you're not good at centering or if it's not something you're used to. But as you play, you just got to remember center, 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 constantly centering. Just keep thinking in your head, center, center, center. You see a slight cancel around here, center, slight cancel around here, center. You don't see me slight canceling centering here. You see, I would have been ready for that. Instead, I wasn't. Yeah, that gun does suck. And this is a very key part. And this is why I tell you lower sense is important, guys. Because the higher the sense, imagine me trying to center if my stick is just super fast, like whipping around. It's it gets centering becomes a little bit harder, becomes a little less consistent. And that's why playing on a lower sense is gonna help you with the centering. It's gonna allow you to snap harder, it's gonna allow you to do things like that.
Now, for the next aim tip, we're going to be talking about is recoil control. You see some of the best players in the world shoot, including myself, and we shoot very straight. And there's a reason for this. One, you got to understand how the recoil of the gun goes. So, obviously, vertical recoil is one of the biggest factors. Now, control vert controlling vertical recoil can be very simple with simply just holding down. And you can shoot from that. If you really work hard on it, you can go from that to that. You can even go really, if you really just take your time, you know, a little bit better. And that's simply just holding down holding your right stick down it's very simple if you had a stick or even a mouse and keyboard you just hold it slightly down as you're shooting and i don't know if you guys can see and you're gonna allow you to you know hold it lower now that is a very big factor when it comes to that but now the problem arises what if my gun shoots like this and it has more horizontal well there's a way to control this recoil as well not only are you going to be holding down, but you're also going to be holding the left. You're basically going to be counteracting the recoil. So the recoil goes up to the right. You're going to hold down to the left. Now, these adjustments you have to understand aren't hard. You don't want to like hard hold left down. You want to slightly hold it. And sometimes it takes a little practice. If you're holding it too slightly, then you got to hold it more. And if you can get that to understand that, you're going to shoot very straight. And you said, hey, app, what are some examples of practicing this recoil control? Well, first of all, it's understanding the recoil patterns because every gun is slightly different. And two, find something small to shoot at. You know, whether it's this thing, whether it's this thing, whether it's this thing. And practice just shooting at that simply. So you cannot shoot over it, under it. Just practice shooting it. And you can practice this for a while, right? Go into private lobby, you know, shoot, shoot at something small at a certain distance. And your goal is to just hit those things you definitely get it down so something us really good players do as well when it comes to aiming which is the next tip is that we use both sticks now as simple as it sounds and how you know potentially easy not every player uses both sticks and what i mean by using both sticks when we shoot and when i shoot we strafe while we shoot left and right it could be a small strafe it could be a big strafe but we never just simply sit still and shoot our gun we're constantly moving and this is good for two reasons one when you strafe you're gonna have your shot slowly pull up pull more auto aim and your guy's gonna pull up more auto aim when you're shooting at someone so this helps for that reason and two not only is that gonna help but when you're strafing it makes it also easier to just make small adjustments mid gunfight you're not trying to simply control your right stick only you're using your left stick to strafe into the guy while controlling your right stick and that require and then at the end you're all you have to do is are these minor adjustments these small you know little micro adjustments that's going to allow your shot to be better and more consistent and you can't even tell right there as i'm shooting i'm moving my strafing stick and i'm strafing very slow but i'm strafing i'm strafing at a very slow rate but i'm strafing and i do that every gunfight i want you guys to practice that Every gunfight, for almost every gunfight, unless you're on a head glitch. The only exception, exception usually is if you're in a head glitch, but even on a head glitch, I strafe. I want that extra aim assist. I also want to make it easier for me to hit my shots if I'm strafing. Strafe. Strafe. It's key. Not only is all that good, guys, it's going to make it's going to be harder for him to hit you when you're strafing. Now, obviously, some guns have faster strafe than others. But just think about that. Not only is strafing really good for all those reasons when it comes to your aim, but now you're also a harder target to hit. So strafing is a key, key component when it comes to having better aim. You see, I'm strafing. I didn't even have to move my aim there. I hit, I pointed him, strafed, and just kept shooting. Not once did I move my right stick, pretty much. And that's the crazy part about strafing and how good it can be. There's a right time for every movement, and that's exactly what I'm going to be breaking down now. And we're going to start off with a jump shot, something that's been in COD for a long, long time, and it's still really good to do and use. One of the biggest times you want to jump shot is around a corner and kind of get that camera slash peekers advantage on your opponent, which you see me do here. You see he shoots me, I jump back and I challenge him and I try to aim in midair and I catch him off guard and get the kill. This takes a little bit of practice, takes a little bit of skill, but if you can really master that jump shot repeat or even jump shot peek out, it's really good. A good time to do this is simply when you jump around a corner, you want to make sure you start pre-aiming. So essentially you're aiming in mid-air. That way, by the time you jump around the corner and you're on your opponent, you get to shoot immediately. 
Here is another example of me using this technique. I know an enemy is nearby, so I'm going to fly out and jump and pre-aim mid-air, hit a nice little bunny hop for the cherry on top, and secure the kill very easily. It's very hard for them to keep up and allows me to easily hit my shots and get the kill. So that is the main time you want to utilize the jump shot. But app, when are the other times? Another good time to do it is if you're in a straight up 1v1 gunfight, especially in a close quarter combat, you can jump shot to help you hit your shots and maybe let them miss. Right here, I do a fadeaway shot as he slides in. And you can see it kind of saved me. It made it harder for him to hit me. And I was able to finish him off with my shots. That is kind of the best time and probably the only other time you really want to jump shot. And now we move on to the next thing, which is the drop shot app. When do I drop shot? Now, drop shot has been as well in COD for a very long time, but you don't really use it often. And you can see some of the best players in the world don't really drop shot as much. And there's main, there's other good movement, right? There's other stuff you can do, but when should you drop shot? There's two key times to drop shot. One is to catch your opponent off guard because either they hit you first, they shot you first, they saw you first, and you need that drop shot to catch them off guard so you can get the kill and secure the kill. If not, you're probably dead. Or two, they call you off guard and you basically, it goes hand in hand. They call you off guard, you know, they start shooting the butt. It's like, holy schmoly, 360 drop shot. It's the only chance I have. So here's a good example of me getting two kills with a drop shot. You can see I only have one plate pretty much this guy's gonna catch me uh kind of off guard he's like what he's in here i'm gonna drop shot just to guarantee the kill but this is where things get fishy i only have one plate again i have a sweat you know come by and i'm gonna shoot him first here right and now i'm gonna lay down so when he jumps around the corner he's not gonna expect me to be standing up i'm not gonna be you know in front of his face i'm gonna make myself a harder target by laying down and you can see even though i only had one plate even though i had a kg up close I was still able to secure the kill versus him. So that's the best time to drop shot. And you can study some of the best players in the world, Warzone pros, and you're going to be doing the same thing because drop shot can be really effective to catch your opponent off guard. You can even do a nice little crouch shot, which is very similar to catch your opponent off guard. And that is going to help you get some crazy kills. It's going to just imagine this. Imagine you're standing up, your character standing up for one second. Next thing you're flat on the floor. It's obviously going to make you a harder target. Your opponents are going to start missing their shots and it's going to allow you to maybe turn on someone, world star someone, so remember, if you're in danger, hit the panic button, drop shot. Now for the next thing we're going to be talking about is slide canceling, which is going to be your main way of engaging into gunfights. Now, why is slide canceling so good? I mean, there's many reasons. First of all, it resets your tax sprint. What that allows you to do is not only sprint around the map faster, you're able to always tactical sprint, which is the fastest form of movement speed. So that's going to allow you to, you know, camera people run away quickly. As you can see, I'm dodging bullets here, uh, reach out faster. You're just going to have that tax sprint in the back of your pocket at all times. Two, it makes you a harder target, right? So if you're slide canceling around continuously, if someone shoots at you, again, you have the tax sprint ready, you're, man you're maneuvering really quickly, and you can easily, you know, either re-engage, disengage run away reach out it allows you to have all these other options so slide canceling is really good for offense and defense but how do you engage with your slide cancels well you can see here i'm slide canceling into the fight and even when i get very close to my opponent once i'm like on them i usually just don't move i let them move because usually they're gonna move and then i just aim in and shoot the problem is and some mistakes you guys do is that you slide cancel and you chase people but sometimes you overdo it versus just sitting there aim in which is quicker than sprint to aim in if i'm standing still and i aim in it's a lot it's not a lot faster but it is faster than just regularly sprint to fire time so you can see here i'm twisted i'm slight canceling everywhere uh, my movement is on point and a good thing to do is you want to slight cancel into the fight a lot of times you can see here i'm slight canceling then aim in slight canceling then aim in and that little movement one is going to catch your opponent off guard it's going to make them hard it's going to make you a harder target right if you're maneuvering if you're hitting those those movements and those cameras like it's going to be hard for your opponent to snap on you and second of all it's going to allow you to hit that movement and give you that second or two to re-snap on your opponent and hit your shots and then basically dead so when you're maneuvering around the map you want to continuously slide cancel to really reset that attack sprint so that's an obvious but when is the best time to overall slide cancel 
Well, the thing I could tell you right now is you want to slide cancel around almost every corner. And when you're challenging your opponent, you want to slide on them, slide cancel on them and essentially camera them. So if I'm if I know opponent is around a corner, if I know I have an enemy around a corner, I'm going to slide cancel around a corner and you got to time it out where you slide kind of close to the wall. You don't want a wide slide because by the time you, you aim in, your opponent's already going to be basically shooting at you. So you really want to cut this corner tightly and then you want to slide cancel it and then obviously camera your opponent and hit your shots. And most of the time you should be able to see your secure the kill. But you have to be very careful because even though slide canceling is really good, sometimes other form of movement like jump shotting can be uh, more beneficial or even just, you know, sprint to fire time. Here's a perfect example of me getting a kill by sliding into the fight and then getting one shot and getting chased down because I'm one shot and continuously um, resetting my tax sprint so I can run away. So right here, I'm going to get lit up in the back. I'm going to get one shot. Uh, he's chasing me hard here. I'm constantly slide canceling. Even as I'm plating, I'm slide canceling. It's resetting my tax sprint. Therefore, I can run away quickly, right? I can run away faster. And here, I'm going to res I'm gonna engage with the slide cancel. You're going to see me see him. And then uh, as I'm tax sprinting, I'm going to slide cancel to the right and get the kill so easily. And this is why this thing can be so good to engage. And I feel like once you get very advanced, you understand movement. Sometimes it's all about countering their movement, which right here, you're going to see me. He's going to come out of nowhere and I'm going to switch him back to my MP5 because I had my sniper out for a second and I'm going to hit wide on the slide cancel. And now for the last tip, we have snaking. What is snaking? It's simply going up and down behind the cover very quickly, whether that's laying down like this laying down back and forward like this or crouching back and forward back and down up and down up and down snaking is very beneficial it can save your life and it can really change the game for you now understanding when to snake is obviously important and that's why i'm here so when should you snake well if you ever um let's say very weak and you need cover and but you're afraid your opponent's gonna push you well you played up and you constantly peek as you're plating you can do this behind a little acs uh, you can do this almost anywhere that has cover. Um, usually, it requires you to lay down. So I can like play it up like this as I'm plating up. Apply all. Just snaking around. And if I feel like I'm threatened, he's going to push me. I unplate and challenge. So that is how you use snaking defensively. So for example, I'm weak. I'm going to I'm gonna snake this. Play it up again. And now I'm going to snake offensively. He jumped in because he's scared. So when do you snake offensively? Well, you can hit shots on your opponent while going up and down and peeking. And just like this, this is a perfect example right here. I just feel like I'm never really the one to lose a gunfight here unless I really miss, you know, and that's on me. But if you snake it correctly, you can easily get these kills. Another example is right here. I'm being held in the gas. It's a 1v1 situation. I'm going to luckily get behind this little rock here. And you're going to see me played up defensively. He's going to, I'm not going to peek at all because he has an angle on me, but I'm just playing up and now I'm going to start snaking him. And I'm just going to peek up and down, shoot, peek up and down, shoot, peek up and down, shoot. And you can see how OP this thing is. All right, guys, I hope you learned something new today. I tried my best to really break down the movement tips and the aim tips to help you guys become a better player. Now, obviously, you could go a little bit more in depth in advance, but I got to keep it simple at the same time so you guys can truly understand when to use these things and do these things. Because at the end of the day, there's always a right time for everything and there's a best time for everything. And that's why you see some of the best players in the world utilize certain movements at certain times and obviously why their aim is so good. So if this video helps you out and it feels like you really learned something, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel so that we can post more content like this. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Comment down below whatever you want, especially if you actually enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.